Hey everyone, so in today's video, I wanna play around with a glass pen. I saw an ad for this on Facebook, and I think these have existed for a long time, but it was my first time seeing one, and I thought, oh, that looks so cool. I wanna see what it would be like to ink a drawing with a glass pen. So the beginning of this video is kind of a miniature haul of the stuff I got for this video. So here I have the glass pen. I just got it on Amazon. They're not very expensive. You can get them from anywhere from like 10 to $20, depending which one you get. Maybe even cheaper, depending where you live. The entire thing is made of glass, including the tip. And I think this spiral twisted design at the end is meant to hold ink. It also comes with this little holder. You can set it on, ooh yeah. Is that even where it goes? Maybe it goes there. I don't know. Then I have a couple inks. I do already have some black ink, but I just wanted to try a new one. <laughs> this is the Speedball Super Black India ink, just a basic black ink, and it is waterproof, which is why I wanted it. It's just a little plastic jar, two fluid ounces, 59.2 mils, yeah. Next up, I got some Winsor & Newton gold ink. Here's what it looks like. It is just a little baby jar, and it is a glass jar. I'm curious to see how it'll work with the pen because it does have a bunch of little gold glitter in it. And so I don't know how the pen will handle that. I feel like I'm gonna have to constantly shake it because <laughs> it settles pretty fast. Next, we have the big boy, the Dr. P.H. Martin's inks. These are the Bombay inks. This is a whole big set of them. Whoa, fancy. Oh, I've been wanting these for so long and I finally got them. <laughs> these are the ones with the little droppers on top, so that maybe isn't the best for dipping a pen in there because I'm probably gonna have to set the dropper somewhere, but I did want the ones with a dropper in case I wanted to drip ink onto something. I don't know, I just wanted these ones. There are smaller jars you can get. Is that on all the way? There are smaller bottles you can get that don't have the dropper on top. So these are my fancy new babies. And I'm gonna try them out. Oh, these need some, these need some mixing. I don't wanna really shake it, but how do I get that to come off? Almost needs a metal ball in there, like nail polish. <laughs> oh, it's starting to come off, okay. Just keep rolling, 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 rolling. So I have a couple drawings I made that I'm gonna attempt to ink, but first I wanna just play around with this a little bit and see what it's like. Okay, I'm gonna start with this speedball ink. Okay, dipping, dipping. That's what it's looking like. I don't know if I dipped it enough. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now something's happening. Crazy. Woo. I'm gonna play around with holding it straighter versus more of an angle. Straight doesn't seem to work, which is good because I was hoping I didn't have to hold it straight. So the first thing I'm noticing is that this is a fairly thick line. That line ended up more thick than what I'm doing now. I think when you first dip it, the line is thicker and then as you use it, it thins out. Let's see how many lines I can make with that dip I made. Woo! Okay, I think it's at the point where it needs a refill. There were a couple lines that got lighter and all I did was turn the pen slightly and kept going. So yeah, at about this point is when I would need to re-dip. That's not too bad. I'm gonna try doing a circle. Oh, there's a hair on there. Oh. I know that's a horrible shape. I just tried to do, oh, that was out of frame. But I was just trying to do big round motions because the one picture I drew, it's a lot of heads. And so I have to do a lot of big round lines, which are the hardest to do. Why did I give myself this task? Okay, I did not dip the pen as much and it's already dying. Oh, there's some, there's some ink. Sometimes you just have to rotate the pen, find the right angle. Hmm, I just dipped it and it's not doing anything. There we go. Testing, I wanna try writing quickly. 
Not too bad. A little slower. Okay, it's pretty neat. Obviously you won't get any varying line width because it's not flexible at all. It's glass! <laughs> but I guess you can always go back over areas that you want to thicken. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this off now and try using it with a colored ink. I think I'm gonna have to run this under the tap to get it all out. This thing is freaking me out because every time I walk around with it, I feel like I'm gonna drop it. I probably shouldn't be waving it around in the air right now. <laughs> it just feels so fragile. I'm scared if I just drop it once, it rolls off the desk, it's gone. Anyway, I'm gonna take this orange ink <laughs> and test it out. Just set the dropper aside. Okay, not too much ink actually sticks to the dropper. That's nice. Just don't roll around. This makes me want to do a Halloween drawing. <laughs> Ooh. Orange. Ah, oh, so cool. I'm so excited to finally have these inks. I'm using orange as the tester because it's my least favorite color. <laughs> okay, there's no room for that petal. Kiki's calling me out on my crimes. She's like, that petal doesn't fit. Fail. Yes, Kiki, I know you're sad. I know you want to play. Kiki. Are you a sad baby? By the way, the paper I'm using is my express or not expressive blending card. Wow, I haven't used that in years and I still accidentally say it. It's the hammer mill paper that I always use, the cardstock. I do notice some feathering, whereas I normally don't. A lot of times feathering is dependent on the paper, but it's also the ink. Like this pilot ink I noticed was feathering mostly with the thicker lines. And I don't get that at all with my Copic Multiliners on the same paper. So it's a bit curious. I'm noticing, I think, a little less feathering with the orange. I mean, maybe not. Well, the flower definitely feathered less than those thick lines. Oh, Kiki's attacking the thing. <laughs> Baby, no. But yeah, this glass pen is pretty neat. Okay, up next, I'm gonna try the gold ink. Let's see if I can just wipe this off. It's just orange. It shouldn't affect my gold too much. <laughs> I'm scared I'm just gonna flick it the wrong way and the tip is gonna smash against the desk and it's gonna break. <laughs> just making sure this gold ink is nice and stirred. Ugh. Oh no. Ugh. Oh boy. No. <laughs> Ow, my hands. This has a nice grippy lid too. It is just stuck. Why? <laughs> What if I bite it? It's working! The teeth save the day! Ah, oh, yes, okay. Woot. Yeet, 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 yeet. I can see the ink moving along the pen. Or maybe it's just swirling over itself. I can see it glistening, but it's not working with the pen. Hold it vertically. Oh, now we're getting a big ball of ink. Oh, gosh. Um, no, yay. Oh, lovely. Well, I think because of the glittery nature of this ink, it's not gonna work with this pen. Cry! It's very nice, though. You just see the sparkles dancing. Mm -hmm. If I wanna use it in the future, I'll just have to apply it with a brush. I already have some gold palettes that I use with the brush, and so, I was hoping this could be used with the glass pen, but I guess not. These are the ones I'm talking about, the Fine Tech Golds. These are super nice. Now I'm sad about the Windsor and Newton Gold. That orange ink is stubborn. I cannot get it out of my pen, even washing it in the sink. I even use a little brush to scrub at it. Anyway, let's ink the other drawings. <laughs> Here are the two drawings I did in Procreate. I just printed them out and proceeded to ink them. For the dog one, I traced it onto the paper before inking it. And then with the other one, I just used my light box to trace it because it would take a while to go back over those faces. And I wanted it to be accurate, so I just went straight, straight on top of it. The dog one was more simple, so I didn't mind just quickly tracing it in pencil before inking it. This pen is surprisingly easy to control because it is so firm, 
Whereas if you have a softer nib, like a really long brush nib, it can be hard to control your lines because of how soft it is. It takes a lot of getting used to. With this, you can have a little more pressure on the pen and not have to worry about it. The one thing you cannot control is the line thickness. Like I mentioned before, if you want an area to have a thicker line, you're gonna have to go back over it to add more ink. The drawing of the faces is a little weird and <laughs> I don't know. It was just me doodling, not really worrying if it's good. I just wanted to draw different expressions and different faces and it was fun. I ran into a problem with my brown Dr. PH Martin inks. I tried two different browns and both of them, a lot of the ink had settled and so I would gently shake it up to mix it but it still wouldn't work so then I tried vigorously shaking it, <laughs> still didn't work. It was just not mixing properly and the ink was too liquidy and so it wouldn't stick to the pen. It was really weird and so I ended up busting out this other brown that I just happened to have, the Waterman Paris Absolute Brown Ink, and that worked much better. The problem with that one is it did feather a lot on the paper compared to the Martin inks. I actually really did enjoy using this pen, especially since I do tend to be more heavy handed when inking. And so I didn't have to worry about destroying a nib. <laughs> and since I use pencils or multi-liners a lot to do line art, I'm used to having to go back in and thicken areas as needed anyway. I rarely use brush nibs to ink. And so this was normal to me. It was fine that it didn't have varying line thickness but I don't think I would use this on a finished illustration that I plan on taking to completion, whether that means coloring or whatever it is for that specific drawing. I don't think I would use it for that. I think I would use it mostly for doodling because the lines aren't so crisp and that might be a combination of the pen and the ink. But when I use, for example, my Copic multi-liners, like I said, there's no feathering, but I do see that with this ink and this pen. So. It's probably not something I would use on a regular basis, just random doodles in my sketchbook or something. It is very satisfying to use though. <laughs> the other thing is you can't get a very fine line with this pen. It's not overly thick, but it's also not that thin. And when you have a freshly dipped pen, the line is thicker compared to when the ink starts to run out. So I guess you could kind of control it that way, like just dip the very tip in but then it's not gonna last very long before you have to dip it again. Really, the feathering is the main deal breaker for me, but I do see myself using this more in the future just for fun little doodles. Kinda like what you see in this video. <laughs>
Before I end the video, I just wanted to announce the winners of my 1 million subscriber giveaway. So congratulations winners, it was just a random draw out of everyone that entered. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on Saturday for my next video.